it's Noir Vember. So what's new in film noir and neo-noir this month? Plenty. We've got a lot to talk about, and I'm going to link to many of the extras in the video's description. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. So, here we go. I hope your wallets are ready. We start off the month with a company that's been killing it this year, Flickr Alley, with a title like The Black Vampire, or El Vampiro Negro, you may think you're venturing into horror territory, but rest assured, this movie is total film noir. Although patterned after the Fritz Lang 1931 masterwork M, El Vampiro Negro from 1953 isn't content with rehashing a familiar story in a South American setting. No, the makers of this film have far more in mind. Unlike the other versions of M, El Vampiro Negro refuses to keep its female characters in the background. Instead, we see these criminal acts from their point of view, something rarely seen in crime films at the time. El Vampiro Negro is a tremendous picture that will not disappoint noir fans, and I urge you to pick it up. I'll link to my review of the film from two years ago. I'll also link to the extras, which are quite impressive including a critical comparison of all three versions of M. Don't miss this one. The Sleeping Tiger from 1954 is director Joseph Losey's first film made in the UK after he was blacklisted. Dirk Bogard stars as Frank, a criminal who breaks into the house of a psychiatrist named Clive Esmond, played by Alexander Knox. Esmond catches Frank in the act, but instead of turning him over to the authorities, he invites him to move in so the doctor can conduct psychological experiments on him. But Frank begins a dangerous attraction to Esmond's wife, played by Alexis Smith. This was the first time Losey worked with Bogard. They would work together again in 1963's The Servant and 1967's The Accident. I had some implausibility issues with The Sleeping Tiger when I first saw it years ago, but I definitely want to revisit the film. This Studio Canal release comes from a new 4K restoration and includes two interviews, one with Bogard's biographer, John Coldstream, and one with writer Matthew Sweet. This is a Region B disc from Studio Canal, and it comes out on November the 7th. Speaking of Studio Canal... Last month, I talked about their October Region B release of I, the Jury, and on November the 8th, we have a North American release from Classic Flicks, which includes a 4K Ultra HD disc, a 3D Blu-ray, and a standard Blu-ray. You can see last month's video for the description of the film, but know that this set includes excerpts from an archival interview with actor Biff Elliott, an archival commentary with Elliot from 2004, and one with Mike Hammer continuation writer Max Allen Collins. There's an extra called Deep in the Shadows, the 3D World of I, the Jury, an unaired Mike Hammer TV show pilot from 1954, written by Blake Edwards and starring Brian Keith, two rarely seen O. Henry Playhouse TV episodes, one with Preston Foster, and one with Peggy Castle, and an episode of the TV series Public Defender, starring Biff Elliott. Now, the retail price tag for this set is $50, but Classic Flix frequently has good sales going on, so keep an eye out for those. Inspired by Martin Scorsese's The Departed, Internal Affairs follows two undercover moles, a Hong Kong police officer infiltrating a criminal gang, and a gangster who joins the police force as a spy for the underworld. This is a terrific game of cat and mouse, filled with deception, betrayal, and desperate people. I think you can call that noir. I've only seen the first Internal Affairs from 2002, and can't wait to see the two sequels, Internal Affairs 2 and 3. All three films are included in this Criterion set, which comes to us on November the 15th. I'll post the extras in the description. 
This next one is of questionable noir pedigree, and I haven't seen it, but I'm including The Diamond Wizard, co-directed by and starring Dennis O'Keefe as a U.S. Treasury agent who teams up with Scotland Yard to try to find the crooks who stole a million dollars from a U.S. Treasury vault. There's also a missing atomic scientist and the scientist's daughter, played by Margaret Sheridan, who's trying to figure this whole mess out. And the film itself could be a mess. The reviews I've seen are not exactly great, but this could be a fun movie. Who knows? I'll put the extras in the description. This one is available on November the 15th from Kino Lorber. David Jansen will always be remembered as the star of the television series The Fugitive, playing Dr. Richard Kimball, a man on the run for a murder he didn't commit. In 1967, Jansen took a break from the show to star in a movie about another wrongly accused murder. Or was he? In Warning Shot, Jansen plays L.A. cop Tom Valens, who is suspected of shooting a man he thought was threatening to kill him. The dead man was a doctor, a very respected member of the community, and everyone is ready to unload on Valens, causing the cop to seek to clear his name. And check out the supporting cast. Ed Begley, Keenan Wynn, Sam Wanamaker, Lillian Gish, Stephanie Powers, George Grizzard, George Sanders, Carol O'Connor, Eleanor Parker, Joan Collins, and Walter Pigeon. Man, that's impressive. No word on extras. Warning shot drops on November the 15th from Kino Lorber. Here's a box set that some of you may be interested in. It's not totally film noir, but you should consider it. It's the Essential Becker Collection from Studio Canal a five-disc box set releasing on November the 28th from the UK, all Region B releases. First, we've got the two films that are not noir, Falaba, or Paris Frills from 1945, a love story set in the fashion world, then Edward and Caroline, a 1951 newlywed comedy drama, and then three more films that are much more in line with noir. First, we have Cask Door from 1952, a period noir set in turn-of-the-century Paris about an ex-con trying to go straight, but he falls for a good-time girl played by Simone Signore. This is considered a classic of French cinema. Next, Touche Pas au Grisby, one of the coolest heist films ever, starring Jean Gabin, Jean Moreau, and Lino Ventura. And the set closes with what I consider one of the greatest prison escape films ever, Le Trou, from 1960. You got four guys in a prison cell who have carefully worked out an escape plan, but what happens when they throw in a fifth guy? Do you cut them in, or do you change your plans? Again, this may be a tough call for some. The last three films make this set worth picking up, I'll link to the Blu-ray.com page that lists all the extras for the films. You'll have to click on each individual films, but I'll tell you, they're mostly just interviews. Based on a play by Sidney Kingsley, William Wyler's 1951 film Detective Story takes place in the 21st Precinct in New York City as we see a day-in-the-life parade of criminals, would-be criminals, friends and family of criminals, and the cops trying to sort them all out. Kirk Douglas plays Detective Jim McLeod, who acts as judge, jury, and if he had his way, executioner, cutting through rules and regulations as if they were made of tissue paper. He's primarily after a doctor, played by George McCready, who's suspected of, well, I don't want to spoil it, the film boasts a superb cast, including Lee Grant as a nervous shoplifter, William Bendix as a sympathetic cop, Kathy O'Donnell as the girlfriend of a first-time offender, Eleanor Parker as McLeod's wife with a secret, Joseph Wiseman as an unhinged career criminal, and many more. This is a terrific film, and I find more to love about it every time I watch it. 
We discussed this one in our Great Movies virtual discussion not long ago, featuring special guest Alan K. Rohde. So I'll put a link in the description so you can watch that video. This disc is struck from a new 4K restoration with an audio commentary by, guess who? Alan K. Rohde. So don't miss this one. This releases on November the 29th from Kino Lorber. Speaking of Kino Lorber, on November the 29th, they continue to get it done with an 11th volume of film noir, starting with A Woman's Vengeance from 1948, directed by Zoltan Korda. While taking care of his invalid wife, Henry, played by Charles Boyer, is stepping out with the young Doris, played by Anne Blythe. Once his wife is dead, though, Henry's free and clear, right? Not according to the coroner, who discovers arsenic in the wife's system. This release is sourced from a new 4K restoration with a new audio commentary by Jason A. Nye. I was a shoplifter from 1950. That's the whole story, right? The title character, Faye, played by Mona Freeman, is a socialite who just can't keep her hands off the merchandise. But she decides she wants to share the love and joins a shoplifting ring led by Herb, played by Charles Drake, and Ina, played by Andrea King, who want to take advantage of Faye's high society connections. Ah, but an undercover agent, played by Scott Brady, is on the case. Look for a henchman billed as Anthony Curtis and a brief appearance by a young Rock Hudson. This one's directed by Charles Lamont and is struck from a new 2K restoration. Unfortunately, no extras, not even a trailer. Closing out the set, we get a remake of the 1937 film The Big Guy. We have Behind the High Wall which finds Tom Tully as a prison warden named Frank Carmichael. Carmichael gets kidnapped by a group of cons attempting a prison escape. A cop is killed, and the escapees look like they're going to make it until they crash the getaway car, killing everyone but Carmichael and another con named Johnny, played by John Gavin, billed here as John Golinor. And Johnny wasn't even in on the breakout. Carmichael also discovers that the escaped cons had been carrying $100,000, which could do some good to Carmichael and his crippled wife, played by Sylvia Sidney. But what to do about Johnny? There's some good moral dilemmas going on here. The film also stars Betty Lynn, remember her, as Johnny's fiance. This is a 2K restoration, no commentary, just a trailer. Not content to keep their noir within the confines of the United States, Kino Lorber takes us to France for Noir Vember with French Noir Collection, what could be the beginning of a new series, with three films. First off, Speaking of Murder from 1957, directed by Giles Granger. It stars Jean Gabin as Louis, the owner of a Paris garage. But we all know that's just a front, right? In this case, it's a front for bank robbers. And all is well in the robbery game until Louis' brother is accused of being a police informer. Who's going to say no to Jean Gabin? Or Lino Ventura? Not me. I'm in. Struck from a 2K restoration, but apparently containing no extras. Next, Back to the Wall from 1958, directed by Edouard Molinaro, features Jeanne Moreau as Gloria, who has been cheating on her wealthy husband, Jacques, played by Gerard Ory. Jacques finds out and begins sending her anonymous blackmail letters, convincing Gloria that her lover is behind these letters. The set closes out with Witness in the City from 1959, another film directed by Edouard Molinaro when a rich industrialist named Pierre decides to kill off his mistress, he doesn't play around. He throws her off a moving train. But you don't mess around with the mistress's husband, especially when he's played by Lino Ventura. But revenge can get complicated, and it certainly does here. 
Like all the films in this set, Witness in the City is struck from a new 2K restoration. Now, there's no word on extras for any of these, but I don't care. I'm in. This set drops on November the 29th. Here's an amnesia noir for you. A Knife in the Head from 1978, directed by Reinhard Hauf, coming to us from the Cohen Media Group. A man named Hoffman, played by Bruno Ganz, goes looking for his estranged wife at the youth center where she works, a gathering place for radicals and revolutionaries. When the cops are there trying to contain a situation, gunshots are fired and Hoffman takes a bullet to the head. Hoffman's injury leads to amnesia, which isn't exactly helpful when the cops suspect him of having started the incident. Maybe more political than noir, a knife in the head has been called one of the most realistic portrayals of a brain injury in cinema. I'm eager to check this one out. The release is sourced from a new 4K restoration and includes an interview with director Reinhard Hauf and another interview with the film's executive producer. November 29th on this one. Here's one that received a lot of buzz on the festival circuit this year. Emily the Criminal from 2022, directed by John Patton Ford. Emily the Criminal played at the Annapolis Film Festival, but I was introducing another film while this one was playing, so I haven't seen it. Actor-comedian Aubrey Plaza stars as Emily, a young woman burdened with heavy student debt and, because of a minor criminal record, she can't find a job. In desperation, she takes a gig as a dummy shopper, buying goods with stolen credit cards, soon finding herself drawn into a world of black market capitalism. I don't do this very often, but I've already pre-ordered this one and can't wait to see it. This release is from Vertical Entertainment, and as far as I can determine, it contains no extras. Look for it on November the 29th. Here's something you don't see every day, an Esther Williams movie that's not a comedy and doesn't feature swimming. It's The Unguarded Moment from 1956, directed by Harry Keller, coming to us from Kino Lorber. Williams plays Lois, a high school teacher who's being sexually harassed by the star of the football team, played by John Saxon. And wouldn't you know it? The police are seeking to track down an unidentified sex fiend. Could it be the same guy? When the students find out, they believe that Lois is the instigator here. Interesting. This one is struck from a new 2K master and includes two new audio commentaries. One with film historian David DelVal and filmmaker David DeCouteau, and one with professor and film scholar Jason A. Nye another November 29th release. And on November the 30th, the Australian label Imprint is releasing a second volume of After Dark, Neo Noir. I'm just mentioning titles here and I'll provide a link to all the info on the extras. Remember, this is a Region B set and I'm moving quickly here. So we have Blue Steel from 1989, directed by Catherine Bigelow, starring Jamie Lee Curtis. Internal Affairs from 1990. Not the internal affairs I mentioned earlier. This one is directed by Mike Figgis, starring Richard Gere and Andy Garcia. Crimson Rivers from 2000, a French noir thriller, directed by Mathieu Kassovitz, starring Jean Renault and Vincent Cassell. Also from the year 2000, The Way of the Gun, directed by Christopher McQuarrie, starring Ryan Philippe and Benicio Del Toro. One more from the year 2000, The Yards, directed by James Gray, starring Mark Wahlberg, Joaquin Phoenix, Charlize Theron, James Caan, Faye Dunaway, and Ellen Burstyn. Quite a cast. And closing out the set is Narc from the year 2002, directed by Joe Carnahan, starring Ray Liotta and Jason Patrick. All right, that ought to keep you busy for Noir Vember. So let me know what you're planning to pick up. Remember that release dates often change, and if they do, I'll be sure to let you know. Thanks for watching, and have a great Noir Vember.